Hey everybody, Wandering Kid here. Welcome back to my Let's Play of Subnautica. So, there's been some base re rearrangement since you dropped in. Mostly I rebuilt a lot of the base up. Let's start with basics, where you're familiar with. Here's my hatch. Out here I've got some more um, aisles out that way. Not an important part yet. A little bit of house cleaning. Over here I've got some titanium lockers built up and a big old sign. Coming in here along the way I've got organics and metals on a giant set of lockers. Over here I've got some crystalline, um, quartz, salt, ruby, diamonds. There's some other stuff that we'll find eventually. We've got some manufacturing places just to hold on to manufacturing bits, a bunch of glass, Oops. things like that. Out here, I plugged in a bunch more solar panels because I was running into some solar troubles. I'll eventually need to plug in some thermals, but we'll come back to that another time. And then out here, I've got the, the rest of the base. And you can see I've got a little alleyway down there. I've moved my moon pool. I'll show you that here in a moment. So supplies are this way, quarters are that way. Some pictures just to uh, spice the place up. Down here, climb down and I've got my moon pool with a bunch of windows and things like that in it. A couple of lights for when it gets to be nighttime. And oops, come on, get up there. My upgrades at this point are hull enforcement, uh, Seamoth sonar. I'll show you how the sonar works. I really just put it in just to show you what it looks like. That will eventually be a secondary, uh, storage module most likely, and then my storage and my depth module 1. Well, now if I stop falling out of the Seamoth, like so, come out here, I can go see more of the world outside, and then over here I've got some quarters. Got a bed, I've got my little Arcade George, a couple of plants, a couple of more plants just to spruce the place up. Put my desk in, I've got a radio. I got a couple of coffee makers, because, well, coffee. I slept in a aquarium. Now, in general, if you're trying to store fish, a locker is going to be more efficient. However, this is pretty, and it just kind of keeps the food handy. A couple of medkit fabricators. I've got a personal locker over here, just in case I find more, uh, what do you call it? Oh, posters, things of that nature. Then out here I've got my little coffee nook with a nice observatory which just dumps me right off into the grassy uh, plateau out there and the uh, kelp forest. Out there to the northeast is where we'll be heading for the mushroom forest here soon enough. But for now, there's something I hadn't made but I did find the materials for, and that is a stasis rifle. That requires a computer chip, a battery, some magnetite, and titanium. Let's build that up. And in case you're not familiar with how this works, we'll slap that into slot four. Let's go for a walk. Hey, buddy. Stay there. And left. Craig McGill crash landed in the acid swamps at Oriel 9, fought off the Rackabit kidney poachers, and hijacked Detain's Star War. If he can do all that, you can survive one more day. So as you can see, this guy got himself stasis, and he's slowly but surely blowing up his little um, poison pots. How this typically looks, so here, we'll show you how one typically fires off. So he goes nuts, and then they all go crazy, right? So if I pop one like so, and I come in here, careful, now he's going to fire another one off, and then shoot it. So if you just fire it quickly, it fires a little bomb. Uh, let's try that way. I'm not hitting the targets. 
Really good little ray. There we go. You got a nice little guy. You fire it and fully charge it. And eventually it just sets itself off. And you get a big old bomb. Now what's handy about this is, you can easily collect food. It'll also help out for some of the bigger guys. Let me go grab some O2 and I'll show you what I mean. Alright, so if we come out here and we go stalker hunting. Oh, one other nice part about this. Let's say you're trying to get a scan on something. Easily scan. You can stasis them and then take a poke at them. Now, oh, where's there a stalker nearby? There's usually one kicking around. Actually, there's usually a dozen kicking around. Where can I find one? Are you kidding me? The one time I want to find a stalker, I can't find one. That's just silly. Here, stalker, stalker, stalker. Ah, I hear one. There he is. Hey, buddy. And stay put. Now, ah, did you want to scan a stalker? There you go. Now, you'll notice he's not completely stopped. He does still have some motion. Kind of the same way that the um, other guys did. But... He's really not getting into it, and as soon as the stasis pod drops, he gets loose. Really, this is a great way to easily fish or anything of that nature, if you can actually aim, which apparently I'm doing poorly today. And I'll just put a couple of guys into my uh, aquarium here. So there you go. That's the stasis, uh, the stasis rifle, and we'll have that available for us now. So for now, what I think I'm going to do is, is I'm going to wander off to our northeast mushroom uh, forest vent. And we're going to go set up a small base out there. I'm missing a little bit of materials because I didn't grab everything I needed. So I'll take you guys there for a trip in a few minutes. All right. So cleaned up my uh, food supplies and let's go head out to the busy bee. Maybe. There we go. Drop down. And out here, just for the final piece of the base, you'll notice I've dropped in our Seamoth Bay, or excuse me, our Moon Pool Bay over here via just a little uh, drop down. And that should keep it out of the way and in a good place. Now, let's head out to the Northeast Mushroom uh, Forest Vet. Now, for those of you who have been watching, you may notice that I have wandered by LifePod 6. However, I have purposely not gone into LifePod 6. There is a reason for that. And that is because if we come into the PDA and we go to Data Downloads, Codes and Clues, and LifePod 6 Transition, Transmission, we don't have, we theoretically don't have enough information because we don't know where LifePod 4 has been. So I'm purposely leaving that one alone until we get to LifePod 4. But you can run into LifePod 6 all by your little lonesome if you go from the northeast thermal vent towards the alien um, water vent. So up here, we just need to create a small little base. And we're going to do this pretty simple. I'm going to hop out. Grab that. We'll put in a multi-purpose room over here. Like so. This is going to be our bioreactor room. Up here, we're going to add in a scanner room. There we go. Now I've got it pointed in the right blinking direction. Sorry about the confusion there. Okay, that's step two. Next up, we're going to put a hatch in. We can get in and out of our base. Like so. Set into the base. Warning. Oops. Power only. I'm almost out of air. Let me hop into the... Hop into the Seamoth for a second. Charge up. We'll wander this over this way. There we go. Once you've got any power in here, you're good to go. But I don't have any power at all yet. 
Next up, we're going to put in a new component. This will be, oh, let's see, that's an interior component, bioreactor. Now, let me see, I forget how to spin that. There we go, we're gonna put that there. What am I missing? I did not grab my wiring kit, seriously? Oh, bother, I forgot a wiring kit. Okay, uh, and as long as I'm in here, we're going to snag a wall locker. Just need to find a place to stick this thing. Um, come on. Hit the wrong buttons, as usual. There we go. Okay, we'll be back in a second. And round three. This time, with lubricant. A reliable power source is a critical step towards self-sufficiency. Consider keeping a photo journal of your achievements to motivate you in times of despair. So to get some charge out of this, we're going to have to go get some biomatter to go shove into this. And this is probably one of the easiest places to do that in. Have heat blade. We'll slice. So as you can see, you can go get some. However, each mushroom only gives you so much. Two apiece, apparently. But that's enough for most purposes for that we're going to have. Come on. Come, come here, thank you. So, we've got a decent supply of mushrooms for the moment. Now, how does the bioreactor work? Well, basically, you shove in bioreactor and it composts into power. So we get a 4x4 grid over here. We shove in one sample. We have power. Power restored. All now we'll get a systems online. We'll get a certain amount of power per um, component that we shove in. Each component will have a different value. Now the base itself will not uh, cost value in any uh, sorry cost charge in any form. It will sit here and just take a full charge. So we're gonna let it do that for a single one. So you'll notice we've gone inactive. We have used up our material and we are at 70 of 500. So to fill these guys up, to fill up four slots, would cost you uh, 280 and you can just keep loading her up until you have made sure you have plenty of power. I'm going to go out pick up a bunch of material and I'm going to shove it into the locker over here and I'll bring you back in a minute. So simple enough not even a full load of oxygen and I've loaded out for plenty of fungal samples. Now the amount of power you get will not depend on the amount of materials you shove in. It simply gets you 50 power every 60 seconds, period. But what this does is it means that once you hit 500, it'll just sit there and churn on whatever's left over. And I'm gonna show a bunch of fungal samples over here. I'll have to care for a bit. So the next thing we we're gonna do was go check out the scanner room. So if we take a look at the scanner room, we can tell that we are down here um, off of, okay, we have two cameras. And just over here is the, oh, the water, oh, what is the name of that? One second. Down here is the alien vent. Uh, I mentioned it earlier, but just in case, uh, the inflow vent is drawing water from the surrounding area, pumping into it from an unknown location. Warm, deoxygenated water is being expelled. Most creatures are, are avoiding the vents. Peepers don't seem to care about it. So over there, we have the vent which is this little pit over here. Over here we have some of the mushroom world, or the mushroom forest, and over here we have some more. And over here you can see that we've got the grassy plateau cliffs right over here. Now I grabbed four scanner room upgrades. So we're gonna pop this guy out much further. There we go. That's about as far as we can see off of this scanner. Gives us a decent range. You'll notice over here-ish, there's some caverns, which we may or may not care about at some point. But of particular interest, let's go start scanning for fragments. 
Now the entire purpose of bringing in the bioreactor is solar power gets weaker and weaker the deeper you go. At 250, it's about non-existent. So if you want to run a scanner or something like that at a deeper depth, you're going to need to bring in a different scanner type. Over here, there's no easily found um, thermals right next to the northeast forest that at least not that I've been able to find. Now, of course, I could just flip this on and go play hide and go seek for them and see what we've got for thermal choices in the area. And I'll probably do that. But for the moment, I want to see what kind of fragments we can find out here in the northeast mushroom forest. Now you'll notice I didn't uh, build this up too heavily. There's a reason for that. We're going to end up, uh, what do I want to call that materials? We're going to end up probably moving this base at some point. This is going to be kind of a transportable idea where we're going to build out a base, go look for what's out there and what's interesting, give it a good scan and go from there. But while we wait for this thing to finish processing, I'm actually gonna pop that off for a second. Over here, we have our CMOS. And I promise to tell you how sonar works. Oops. If I don't get out of the CMOS. So out here, if you left click, nothing actually happens. First, you have to turn on sonar by hitting uh, whichever button it is. For me, it's three. And then if I left click, I can see a ping. And out here, I can see the general terrain of what's going on and it charges up. So if I tag it, you'll notice I can also see some of the larger creatures are out there. It's not picking up my little rays, or well it is, but it's hard to sell. And it costs 1% of your power per ping, or at least it used to. It looks like it's costing less these days. But if we come out here, you'll notice I can start seeing cave systems, things like that. Now, it is active every time I hit left click. So I have to left click to get it to do anything each time. This looks like a big old drop over here or it's out of range. Let's just wander over this way. There we go. And we found some more of the Northeast forest. And there's a little archway over there that we can see and a big cliff up here on the upper left. So this is how you use your sonar component. And you pretty much have to just keep pinging it as you go. One of the nice things about this is if you're dealing with Reaper Leviathans, it will help you find them a little easier. However, I cannot say anything for little edible fish. They're dumb and they run into you constantly no matter what you do. Uh, what is... is this what I think it is? I'm going to just keep poking at this for a second. Okay, now. Oh, what did we find over there? Look at that. Another alien vent. Detecting massive energy signature in the region. Cannot identify it. So, we found another uh, alien vent out here. Doesn't tell us too much. At least not yet. Where are we? We are about 550 meters from the uh, mushroom forest vent to almost due south. Now, you may have noticed somebody just spawn up out there. That would be called a warper. And where did he get off to? I don't see him anymore. He was right over here. He can make things annoying. Where did he go? So we're over at the bulb zone. That's a pretty good deep trench. And you can see how deep you go. You can only get so far on the sonar. It's got a specific range that it maxes off on. So you can't see to the bottom of the world. I think it's 50 meters. We can go test that at some point if we want to. But at this point, I think we started to find... Oops. Enough components to bring up the, scum, uh, the HUD from the scanner room. And let's go see what kind of fragments we can see. That's if I don't keep running into things. So you've got plenty of sonar power uh, for the Seamoth. So you know the Cyclops tends to use more power than this does. Okay, let's see what we can find out out here. Cyclops bridge fragment, nice to find. There we 
we go. There's another Cyclops bridge fragment. Okay, we got the bridge. Bridge component built. Yeah, apparently I need some water. Didn't I just... That was very weird. Ah, there it is. It was like suddenly the thing I was scanning just went AWOL. Oh, very strange. Sorry, that's my headset being silly. Okay, so we're gonna just wander around it. What the? Okay, I gotta figure out what's with my headset. Okay, let's hope that stopped misbehaving. So apparently I need some water. I think I've got some on the seam off. Let me just check that. I think I brought some extra. Yep, I did. So we'll slurp down a bit of water here. So try not to let your uh, energy levels get below 20% on either water or food or things start slowing down. Alright, that's a lot of the components. So we found a bunch of stuff. I'm going to poke around see if we can find any other fragment types. This is being very weird. As soon as I get in range, it looks like the scan just stops. Huh. That's odd. Not used to it having problems of that nature. So I want to hop in and take a look at how power's looking. Looks like we're still charging out decently. Let's see what kind of reserves we've got. We've gone through about half our pile of fungal samples, just getting everything up to power. So I'm going to go grab some more and just shove it in. Just to keep our power up and running while we do all these scans. Simple enough. These scanner fragments are becoming very odd. Every time I get near one, they kind of start disappearing, and I'm not used to seeing them do that. I'm not sure what's going on with that. So just keep an eye keep an eye on what's going on. There's a power transmitter. There's a Cyclops bridge fragment. This disappeared, uh, I guess it was about 30 or 40 meters. Something like that. So, yeah, they're just kind of going AWOL when I get nearby. I'm not sure what's going on with that. But let's see what's hiding in here. I'm not finding any new fragments. I did find mold pool fragments down here when I came through. Uh, what do we got over here? Uh, Cyclops Bridge. I didn't find a lot of them, but I found enough to get the moon pools going. But I'm not finding any new ones. Not sure what's up. what's going on here. Once we pop in, looks like we found all of our nearby fragments. Now, if for some reason you found some fragments, but not enough of a particular type, um, head out here and then move the base. Shift it, say, 300 meters X or Y or Z, and you should be able to do something with it. Well, that pretty much covers what we needed to do out here. I wanted to show you guys how to go fragment hunting and things like that. And our options out here, we've got some copper ore, we've got some creature eggs. There are gel sacs out here. Now, these are an important thing to start locating. Let's see, what we, let's see if we can find one nearby. Okay, there's one over that way. Just the one. All right. So gel sacks are an important material to find. Okay, we are finding some. They're off on, looks like to my north. Yeah, it looks like they're out in my north. Okay, that was over by where I saw that reaper before. That's, they're also deep. Look how deep these guys are. They're down along the edge of a cliff. So let's go take a look at what's going on out there. We're gonna grab that seam off to do this. I think this is mountains. I'll confirm that. But I see some more gel sacks over there. So I'm going to collect myself up some gel sacks. Come over here. This is a gel sack. The first one you ever find, hack it. And then pick it up. You want to uh, slack, slice them twice, then pick them up. We'll grab a scan while we're in here. So this was over by where that other uh, vent was. We'll go grab a scan on the gel sack. 
And oops. And here's why. You grab one, two, three, four, and then it blows up. So you can get four gel sac spores. Sorry, what I meant to say was you grab, you hit it three times and then pick it up, and you get three spores and a full sack. Now we're going to want these spores later. I don't have, uh, I don't think I have what we need for that yet. One, two, three, pick that up. Who just bit me? I think it was one of these little biters over here. But anyway, okay, so we've got a couple of gel sacks. This is used to make aerogel. Uh, that's going to be a primary component that you'll be needing here soon enough. What do we got over here? Uh, Cyclops engine fragment. So I found another one out here, which apparently I already had. What am I missing for the Cyclops? Hop in. If I come in here and I go check my blueprints, I've got like 42 blueprints at this point. Uh, we just made Aerogel. That's a ruby and a gel sack. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, we've got a couple of cooked and cured fish. Um, the reinforced drives, dive suit requires synthetic fibers, which we don't have the ability to make yet. Uh, we made the stasis rifle. Ultra high capacity tank, I need to do that yet. I need to go find more lithium for it. Um, the Seamoth Depth mo Module 2 is a plasteel ingot, which if you remember right, requires uh, lithium and then magnetite and some enameled glass, which requires stalker teeth. And then to go all the way down, we'll have to grab another plasteel ingot and some more rubies. So we can actually pull the Seamoth all the way down with what we know of material so far. Over here is the Prawn Suit Death Module 2. That'll require kyanite that we're not going to find for a while. Okay, over here we have a bunch of vehicle upgrades. Okay. We discussed these in the last episode. We'll just trek on. Over here, though, we now have the ability to make a Cyclops. That'll require three plasteel ingots, three enameled glass, some lubricant, and an advanced wiring kit, and some lead. That is not an impossible task. We can finally create the Cyclops. We'll be back to that. And what else do we have down here? Multi-purpose room, moon pool, observatory, um, the thermal plant, which we haven't built yet, a psych, uh, spotlight, which is just, it's really not worth using. The water filtration machine requires some aerogel. Remember, we are just discussing that. And the vehicle upgrade console we built. These are the grow beds. I don't see an external grow bed. I see some basic plot plants, pot plants, an indoor grow bread, and a plant shelf, but I don't, haven't found an outdoor one yet, which is what we need to plant the gel sacks. All right, so let's head back towards base. That was an important find, so I'm glad we located it, but now we're going to head back to base, discuss what else we can pick up out here as scannable options, and we're going to go from there. So let's kill the gel sacks. So, as I was saying, we got some options. We got copper ore, we've got some creature eggs. At some point, I'm going to go take a look for those for a reason. Uh, we can go look for more fragments. Gel sacks, gold. We found some gold areas. Uh, heat area, there's some lead. Uh, limestone chunks, there's lithium out here. Magnetite, I guess there's some metal salvage. We can find some ruby and stuff like that. Salt, sandstone, some shale chunks. Uh, some silver ore, some titanium, and ooh, we can find uraninite. So uran ur uraninite is actually your radioactive material to allow you to build radioactive um, generators. It looks like it's part of a cave system down here. Over here to... Let's see, to our east by southeast-ish. And you can see underneath the sonar top up here, we can find there's a cave system down here. I'm not quite sure how to get into that offhand, but we can go take a look and see if I can't figure that one out here in the eventual future. But that looks interesting. So we might want to go take a look at that. But one of the things I did want to come out here for since it's available is I'm going to flip on some lithium, and I'm going to go lithium hunting because we need to go get some more. So that's something I definitely want to get. 
Looks like there's some right up here. Okay, so there is lithium up on... <laughs> oh, my inventory is full because of that. Hang on. I need to go bring all of my... Oh, what do you call it? Gel sores. Gel sacks and a bunch of titanium I found back home. So I can leave this up and running. We've got 500 to 500 power. I'm going to take a look at how much material is left there. Six spots. So we're going to just fill that in so I don't have to care about it while I'm missing. Um, all right, you know what? We'll shove this in so I don't accidentally burn it. One, two, three, four, five, six. This will keep our bioreactor up and running while I'm gone. And worst case scenario, I can always just go grab more. Let's put these away. All right, so I've got stuff to do. I've got things to go bring back. And I've got some lithium out here that we're going to go collect up. And we'll just go finish exploring northeast, uh, ooh, northeast mushroom forest. After we go find some more lithium out here and we drag it home. So I will bring you guys back in the next episode. As always, please leave a like or subscribe if you've been enjoying the series. And I will see you next time. Welcome aboard, Captain.